And the song they should be hearing is praise to God from the depths of your being because of what God has done in your life. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you have known that wonder of salvation and an unhindered relationship with God through Jesus Christ, that song should be rising up in the things that you do and the things that you say without you even trying. But instead, we have a tendency in this world today to, 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 to put a fence around it. To put a muzzle on that. Don't put a muzzle on that. Put a muzzle on that ugly stuff that comes flying out of your mouth. But don't put a muzzle on the song of praise to our God that rises up by the depth of your heart just because you love God and you know He loves you. Man, how can you, how can you keep from saying praise the Lord sometimes? Even at work. Even in front of people who don't know the Lord. Oh my! What's going to happen? They're going to go, what did you say? Oh, no, now I have to say what I said. Hey, just let it be part of your heart. Let it be part of your life. Let the praises of God rise up from the depth of your being. And you will start saying things in front of people that, you know what will happen? Is they'll go, oh, you're praising God for that? Why, why would you praise God for that? Well, because of what God's done in my life. Really? What do you do in your life? Well, let me tell you. I was blind and now I see. In whatever way that is applicable to your life. Hey, I was blind, now I see. Really? Wow. I feel kind of dim of sight myself. God will put before your path those who need to hear that testimony of grace. And the good news that God isn't looking for people to clean themselves up and then come to Him, but God is looking for fixer-uppers and that His grace is sufficient. Man, people loved to hear that, didn't you? Didn't you love to hear the fact that you didn't have to get all cleaned up in order to come to the Lord? But that He accepted you, like the old hymn says, just as I am, without one plea except that Jesus died for me. <laughs> that's how we can come. Man, that's good news. There's a lot of people who need to hear it. And they hear it from that song that you sing. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud. Many, O oh Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. Oh, wow. Lord, you've done so many things, but catch this. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, there are more that can be numbered. Man, God's done amazing stuff. But beyond that, He's thinking about you. He's thinking about you. His thoughts are toward you and me. Wow. God's thinking about me. Yes. 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 Because you're his child and he loves you. That's the God that you serve. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Huh? Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. What's he talking about there? Well, here's some interesting stuff. Of course, we know that the truth of the gospel is the fact that sacrifices, sacrificing animals and so forth, which was ordained in the Old Testament by God himself, actually is not what God is looking for. He's looking for the sacrifice of the heart. He says, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Jot it down in your Bible. Or in the Bible of the person next to you if you don't like to write in your own Bible. Exodus chapter 21, verse 6. You see, the Hebrews had a custom ordained and directed by God that they were not allowed to keep a Hebrew slave, a fellow Hebrew, as slave or as their servant for more than seven years. In the seventh year, they had to be set free. And if they brought anything with them, if they came married, they needed to leave married. If they brought anything with them, they needed to leave with it set totally free. But perhaps that servant said, but I don't want to go. 
I love you, Master. I love working here. You're family to me. I want to stay. Well, then what they would do is they would go to the doorpost of the home and take the earlobe, put it up against the, the doorpost, and they would drive an awl through it. They didn't have those fancy little things like at the kiosk at the mall to, to pierce your ears, but that's what it was. They were piercing the ear, and then they would typically, it doesn't say specifically they should do this, but typically what would happen by custom is they would put a gold earring in there. And that earring was a sign that they were what was called a love slave, a slave who chose to stay with their master because they love him. I'm not following Jesus because I have to. I'm following Jesus because he loved me enough to pull me out of that pit, out of that miry clay. And I want to stay and I'm willing to stay a servant. It's not sacrifice or offering. God's not looking for how much you put in the box back there or how often you come to church, though. Those are certainly good things to do and don't stop doing them. But that's not what God's looking for. God's looking for someone who says, Lord, I want to stay. I love the love that you have shown me and I love you with that love back and I, I want to stay. Give me an earring. Put it all through my ear. This part about it's written in the book of me. Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It's written of me. Again, jot it down. Look at it later. Hebrews 10 talks about this, that this is in, in one primary application, speaking of Jesus. Where the translation says, a body you have prepared for me. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. Speaking of the fact that Jesus' death and resurrection was prophesied. But it also has application to us. The fact is that God's not looking for outward observance, but inward subservience. He's not looking for outward observance, but inward subservience. That's what God wants of us. And in the same way, God changes our heart so that we can say, man, I delight to do your will. I like doing your will. I love living for the Lord. It's a whole lot better than it was living for myself. A whole lot better. I delight to do his will. It doesn't mean it's always easy, but man, it is always so blessed. I delight to do your will, O oh God. And your law is within my heart. This is before the prophet spoke about the fact that there would be a new covenant where he would write the law on our hearts, which is the new covenant that we live under. Huh? But David knew it. He said, man, Lord, you, you put your law in my heart. I'm not just following the book. Man, you've, you've put that into my heart. 